my talk today is about the future of branding, something I think is incredibly important for retail. I'm going to tell you about a new technology innovation called blockchain. Um, now, blockchains aren't really um, a foreign entity at events like Wired Money. Um, and indeed, we've already seen how blockchain and Bitcoin are disrupting finance. But they are quite a new topic for retail. Um, so I'm going to explore today, we're going to go kind of a bit out there, a bit future facing, and we're going to look at how the blockchain might disrupt how companies communicate with their customers and ultimately the future of trust in brands. So I wonder which one of these I press. Probably this one. Nope. Maybe that one. Cool. Great. So who am I? I'm Jesse. Um, I come from a background, um, PhD in computer science, engineering, but also in interaction design for brands. Um, and I've worked both in supply chain and in marketing, and that led me to start a company um, called Provenance. So Provenance exists to help brands build trust through transparency. So I'll explain a little bit more about what I mean about that. So we help um, businesses that create and sell products to gather the great stories and the facts from product supply chains and life cycles and bring those to the consumer. So that could be on product, online, or um, in store. And technology is really a core part of what we do. Um, we like to think of ourselves as innovating in digital mechanisms for trust. So whether that is helping crowdsource information from your supply chain to bring to a consumer, or looking at some slightly new mechanisms for how we might trust information on the web. So as shoppers, we can only choose from that which we're presented with, right? Um, we have price as an important metric. We also have color and function and aesthetics. But a metric that I found super interesting when we're shopping is brand. Um, and I think it's one of those things that's really got an evolving anatomy. Um, but there's no doubt that you wouldn't agree with me that brands are incredibly valuable. They um, stand for reputation. They've got a huge amount of emotion surrounding them. They stand for quality. They're a mark of assurance. And some of them are kind of seen as behaviors and, and a living entity. So I really want to look at the future for branding today. This um, talk is really quite out there, we're going to go explore right into the future of what we think branding could really be. But in order to do that, I think we need to look a little bit at where branding has come from and the kind of journey it's been on so far. From the village, the ultimate in trust, peer-to-peer, -peer, direct, through uh, you know, the Mad Men era of uh, branding being this kind of mecca, um, into the future and how we might start to see companies becoming a bit more open and transparent and how new technologies might start to broker trust. So yeah, first of all, brand as the ultimate mark of trust in the marketplace of a 1,000 years ago. Brand was just a mark um, on your product, and trust was brokered person to person, nice and simple. So the printing press meant brand could spread its wings and spread its wings all the way it did into um, a hugely disconnected phenomenon called advertising that started reinforcing branding um, along with marketing teams all over the world, started turning brand into this hugely compelling emotional hook. Um, and advertising did an amazingly successful job of building a huge kind of um, epic trusted third party out of brands. Um, but it did also build a huge gulf between reality and perception. And this worked for a long time, but it also started to create a bit of a trust gap, which we'll explore in a minute. So for a while, the internet was really just another method for amplifying branding. Um, but what was interesting about the internet um, in relation to kind of brands and marketing is it started to form, again, that kind of two-way communication that we are used to from yesteryear. And rather than brands being this smokescreen of information asymmetry, they uh, started to have to talk again, um, two-way communication. Um, and I think the internet is really actually starting to take that to the next extreme. I think it's starting to knock down that knowledge divide between how a business is perceived from the outside and what's really going on on the inside. Um, and I think it's coming at quite a good time, actually. Um, when everything from shoes to crisps are claimed to be handcrafted, and when huge international fast food chains are claiming to have local farms, you might say we're experiencing a slight crisis in brand trust. So, 
I think this is just starting to show, and I think a new type of consumer is starting to emerge, one that is incredibly empowered by technology. You know, they've got their phone in their pocket, they can Google everything, the information desired starts to close very quickly. Um, and we are already seeing quite a few businesses respond to this new kind of consumer. Um, lots of them coming out of the States, but these brands are really embracing kind of openness and transparency as part of their core brand DNA. So from companies like Everlane, who sell t-shirts and stuff, and they show full details of all of their factories. Um, the Kering Group recently started Outer Known, um, a brand that, again, is, is, is fully transparent. Some might even go as far to say that in this hyper-connected world, perhaps being more transparent is the new power. So let's get back to technology. So we have seen that technology is playing a really important role in the brands and people and products we decide to trust. Um, and what's great is its information can flow. Uh, but looking at businesses that create physical products, like we do at Provenance, you've still got this epic supply chain. So even if you wanted to be more transparent about what you're doing as a business, it's quite difficult to gain consumer trust. You know, you're really just trying to um, share a piece of information, but it's coming from very far away. And even though you can't totally discount the rise of uh, new, innovative local manufacturing techniques, for the most part, our supply chains are still massive and global. So we need kind of mechanisms, something to help broker this digital trust, even though we're so far away from each other. So one step change technology I'd like to talk about that's very relevant for the brokering of trust is the blockchain. So Mark Andreessen said the blockchain is the first thing like the internet since the internet, which means it's probably fairly important. Um, so blockchains have presented a hugely powerful innovation for finance, um, but they also are a, a quite an exciting new paradigm for trust in general. So the Economist described them as the great chain for being sure about things, or a kind of way of making and preserving truths. So why is that really important? If we're getting lots of information from the internet, um, why is something like a blockchain going to help us? Well... The reality is that still on the internet, we still don't 100% know if the person you're communicating with is a dog, right? We still don't 100% have complete trust over information we're gaining through the internet. And this is becoming quite problematic, particularly in a retail environment where you're grabbing data from lots of different places. You need to know that data is trustworthy. So let's look a little bit at what the blockchain actually is. So it started life in the mind of Satoshi Nakamoto, a still unidentified um, publisher of a paper on a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, version of electronic cash called Bitcoin in 2008. And Bitcoin was incredibly interesting because, firstly, it worked as a, as a nice method of digital cash, which was good, um, but there's no trusted third party. There's no bank in Bitcoin. So instead of a bank, we have this um, shared data layer called a blockchain. So currently, the way we handle data at the moment, it's, it's all handled in silos, like on the left. So you need these trusted third parties like banks in order to broker data. But if we look to the future, and a concept like the blockchain, which gives us a universal truth or a shared auditable data layer, we don't necessarily need those third parties anymore. In fact, we can dip in and out and find information willy-nilly as we want, because we suddenly have this, this concept of a, of a shared truth. So you're probably wondering, what on earth has a peer-to-peer -peer cash system like Bitcoin got to do with branding? Well, I think possibly in the early 90s, a lot of people would have wondered what the hell did a global network for data exchange called the internet have to do with retail? Um, I think brands have developed into a really important trusted third party, and it's it's that that blockchains can really help innovate on. So I mentioned earlier the kind of move towards more open and transparent brands. Well, this is something where the blockchain can hugely add value because it gives you that kind of architecture for authenticity. It's an amazing way of brokering data and information so that you can compare open and accountable information about companies, even if production and operations are happening all over the world and hugely far away from the point of sale. So, we've gone from person to person trust. We looked at a moment where brands became huge, trusted third parties brokering a lot of information, and now looking towards the future where perhaps brands become more like a lens 
and data can flow freely between uh, parties in companies and parties um, in, re in retail. And starting to get that far more two-way style communication that we've seen all the way coming from the village. So at Providence, we're working a little bit on this. We work on open data a lot and helping bring information from supply chains to consumers. And we also work with blockchain technology to help support key parts of brands, so such as confirming a product is indeed authentic, confirming where something was made, um, or if it's got a certification, is it indeed actually organic, helping to really bring sort of concrete, um, trustable facts to a retail environment. So a lot of this might sound quite distant future, and well, I really thought, think the point of this talk was to try and help think a bit about the next kind of wave of the internet and where it might be going. But the reality is a lot of the building blocks for all of this stuff are already in place, and we all know how rapidly technology can move forwards. And just as we have seen the internet completely transform retail and commerce, so I believe the blockchain, a hugely robust mechanism for digital trust, might totally redefine what we believe in a brand. Thank you. Jesse, thank you very much Sorry. Uh, indeed for that. I think probably a few people in the audience might want to get a sense of what it looks like. What, sure. what I mean, I know you've, we're going to bring a fish with you. It's terribly sad that you weren't able to do that today. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I know you've been experimenting a little bit with, with food, which seems a natural mm. place to think about yeah. um, uh, you know, the tracking, the authenticity, and the, mm -hmm. and, the, and the process behind that. Do you want to tell us a little bit about, about the fish? Sure, sure, yeah. So um, that's one experiment we're doing with Providence, is looking very much at um, how we can bring blockchain technology to uh, essentially track um, where our food comes from. So we work quite a lot with food and drinks brands. Um, and authenticity and more information is becoming incredibly important to food, looking at anything from kind of organic to allergies. Um, and so, yeah, with the fish, we are tracking them when they get caught, working with a certifier um, and verifying them and, and committing them to this open data stream so everybody in the world can see that that fish has been caught in that place. And then watching as that fish exchange hands, so giving that fish a sort of digital version, which means by the time you can buy that fish, you can then see the full provenance of it. Mm. A lot of brands I know are very worried, rightly, today about fakes. Um, yeah. And about, I mean, particularly obviously in the luxury industry, that's a, an enormous issue. Um, and you kind of get the sense they'd give their right arm to be able to prove um, <laughs> that something was real and something yeah. was fake. So I wonder how you think about that from your uh, with your technology and how, that, how people might use it in that, in that way. Yeah, definitely. I think authenticity is a really huge part of what we're doing, for sure. Um, I mean, so we, we aren't kind of going and inspecting whether this is Chanel and that's not Chanel, but by the, the kind of very notion of an open, fully accountable database that is accessible by anyone, you can start to see, oh, okay, this is where all of those luxury items are, and therefore you can start to see, oh, is, is that a fake or not? I think... Um, yeah, I think, I, th I think the blockchain is going to be incredibly powerful for that notion of, of, is this real, is this what I think it is, particularly as we start to shop more on the web, where sometimes that can become a bit difficult to navigate. Yeah. I mean, for the, for the retailers in the room who may have only just learnt what the blockchain is, <laughs> yeah. um, I do feel a little sorry for them because it's going you know, at 100 miles an hour, but um, I also know that the the sort of blockchain Bitcoin community can be quite anarchic, can be, you know, not the sort of people that you would necessarily have in your yeah. office helping you out with your authenticity <laughs> yeah, um, of your luxury not. handbags. So I wonder how, you know, are you seeing this sort of resurgence of, of, of new kind of blockchain uh, engineers that are, you know, going to be joining the big retailers of the future? Or how, is, how, yeah. do, how do you see this sort of panning out and trying to sort of get a sense we'll of see. That? Well, I want it to be quite future-facing, you know. And at the moment, yeah, for sure. Like, I'd say 90% of the people working on blockchain stuff are, yeah, just trying to kind of totally decentralise everything, which is, yeah, some might say a little bit scary. Um, I, th I think it's changing very, very fast. Like, like I've the been of the internet, and yeah, as you said, exactly. I mean, these are the, yeah. the kind of Wild West early days, I guess. Exactly, and it is very much still Wild West, but there are a number of companies, including Provenance, that are, are kind of gathering together and realizing that this technology is too powerful to just remain in the hands of the anarchists. This needs to be taken and used to do amazing things, like yeah. the beginning of the internet. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, too. <laughs>